From New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, Wendy and her Hot Talk panel break down the biggest stories of the week, including the Bill Cosby controversy. And from the hit comedy Brooklyn Nine-Nine, we're getting our laugh on with Chelsea Peretti. Plus, all of today's juiciest hot topics. Now, here's Wendy. And before the holiday season officially kicks off. Yeah. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. today said to me, happy holiday. Oh. I didn't know whether to punch him in the head or wish them that back. It doesn't feel like the holiday season, does it, yet to you? Oh. And all you see are those Christmas commercials. Tomorrow, I gotta go in the storage room and figure out where the Christmas tree is. <laughs> and I'm not gonna put it up this weekend, but my parents arrive on their brooms <laughs> um, on Tuesday, and I like to put up our Christmas tree the day after. That's my tradition, and it was a tradition growing up in Jersey. We, you put up your Christmas tree on Black Friday. <laughs> you know, while everybody else is out shopping, I like to be at home with a little hot toddy and a comfortable <laughs> robe and the TV on, and I, I like to just, just do it by myself and put up the tree. And I don't like a real tree, I like a fake tree. <laughs> on account of you don't know what the hell kind of squirrel is gonna come out in the middle of the night and kill you. Oh, I have hair. And kill you. Yeah, real trees frighten me. And then who's gonna clean up the pine needles? My, like, my Kevins are good, but they're not so helpful around the house. So it's gonna be me. And, you know, my back just can't take all that bending up and down. <laughs> So, fake tree. Anyway, um, happy holiday. Mm. Okay. So, the streets are saying that Kris Jenner might want to rethink her new boyfriend, Corey Gamble. Well, you know, Corey used to date um, the, one of the stars of Atlanta X's, Cherie Buchanan. Do you watch that show? Do you know who that is? Well, here's Cherie. They dated apparently for two or three years, and Cherie is now speaking out, warning Chris. Well, here's what she says, and then, you know, I've got an opinion. <laughs> he's all about power and money and will do whatever it takes to get it. I think he's using her. Chris is not Corey's type physically at all, but with, all, but with her power and money, Chris could have been Betty White, and Corey would still have hit on her. <laughs> Good luck, but watch out, girl. Now, now here, here's my thought. You know, if this young lady was not a reality star herself, then I would say, well, she might have sour grapes, but not so sour. But because she's in search of fame herself, clearly by being on Atlanta X's, she's probably just pissed that he got with somebody who's more famous than she would probably ever be. <laughs> Number one. Number two. She might be insulted that he is, he finds a woman like twice her age, twice as sexy. I'm talking about Kris Jenner, you know? And number three, um, don't worry, dearie. Corey doesn't have a hand in the race. Chris runs anybody in her life, in my mind, you know? Chris decides when the dating will begin, how the sex is going to be, where they're gonna eat dinner, and, and when Corey is to be dismissed from her life. In my head, Chris is take charge like that, which is a good thing and a bad thing, but um, yes, we don't need to hear from you. We know that he's using her for fame, but we also know that she will devour him like a viper. And, 
And, but I do feel like it came up in our Hot Topics meeting, do I feel that Chris will ever get married again? And I said, yeah. No, I think so. You want to know when, though? I think she just turned 59 years old. And once, once all of her kids abandon her, and, and... <laughs> you read the new issue of the Star magazine. Look, once all of her kids abandon her, you know, once they wisen up and realize that the mom has torn the family apart through little tiny divisive moves, and then the grandchildren she's not allowed to see on a one-on-one -on -one because the, 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 the moms will be all scared that Chris is going to try to poison their minds, and Chris is gonna be sitting on her pile of money by herself looking out the window and deciding that, you know, I think I want to change my wicked ways and I really do want real love. I, I do believe that leopards do sometimes change their spots, at least in the name of real relationships and thinking about the wrongs that they've done earlier in life. So do I think she'll get remarried? Yes. When will it happen? About 10 or 12 years from now, when she's 69 or 72. That's not old. <laughs> Listen, that's not old these days. There are plenty of very, very sexy 69 and 72 year olds. Look at that Raquel Welsh. Oh, yeah. Along with many others. You know? And at 72 or 70 years old, her version of a younger man will be a hot 55-year-old. And, and she will be a different woman when she's with him. That's all. So uh, in conclusion, um, girl from Atlanta X's, you don't need to warn us. She needs to be warned. Um, uh, or he, Corey needs to be warned about that woman. That's all. <laughs> I love the R&B singer Monica. You know, she's been through a whole lot in her life. Um, do you remember many, many years ago, about 15 or 18 years ago, she had this boyfriend and they went to the cemetery um, to visit, um, he went, you know, she was in the car too. They went to visit somebody that he knew uh, or she knew. And when she got out of the car, he stayed in the car and he shot himself in the head and killed himself. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've always liked Monica. I think she's a sweet girl, but I also do truly believe that when huge light bulb moments happen in your life, like you witness a suicide or you survive breast cancer or you've had miscarriages, um, I think that somewhere deep inside you, you become a different person. So um, she has a surprising new job. Um, she's pursuing a career as a nurse. Oh. I know. Yeah. Apparently, apparently she works the overnight shift when she finishes the recording studio while her three children are sleeping and I guess her NBA Miami Heat husband is on the road hooping or something. Now, my only thing about her pursuing nursing is you have to have a nursing degree to be a nurse, to be able to put the butterfly um, IV in and take a temperature and use the stethoscope and like you can't be an R&B star moonlighting as a nurse. <laughs> like why don't you just stop at candy striping? <laughs> I was a candy striper. Was anybody else here ever a candy striper? I don't clap if you are. <laughs> yeah. And and I think that we're all of a particular age. I might be older than many of you. I don't do they still have candy stripers? They do. Do they still wear those beautiful white uniforms with the red stripes? <laughs> they don't? I used to love the uniform. I was a Girl Scout and a candy striper and all that stuff, you know? That stuff looked great on my college resume, so my parents pushed me, <laughs> my parents pushed me into every damn thing. Anyway, um, I think that Monica's heart's in the right place, but, like, I wouldn't want Monica to be my nurse. <laughs> like, like, first of all, I know you. You sing. <laughs> and I never read that you went to nursing school. And I'm nervous, but you can go down to the gift shop and get me some magazines. Cause that's what candy stripers do. Do you remember? We would go in and see all the sick people, young, old, and in between. We'd be at the hospital for like three hours. We'd turn on the TV. If the remote dropped on the floor, the patients would ring the bell and we would jump up out of our seats cause the doctors and the nurses were busy doing things. And we would fluff pillows and we'd go into the, we'd go to the magazine stand downstairs and we would sit and talk to them and read them stories or just have conversations, just to make sick people feel good. Oh, Monica, your heart's in the right place. But <laughs> nobody wants Nurse Monica with no nursing degree helping them.
And you know I love my magazine, so it's time for Wendy's Got You Covered. Yeah. Hit it! So, Taylor Swift is on the cover of Cosmo UK. Yeah. Looking beautiful. And it's been a while that she's been single, and her friends are always eager to set her up with a new man. Well, I get that. But here's what Taylor says. She says, people will say, let me set you up with someone. And I'm just sitting there, there saying, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not lonely. I'm not looking. They just don't get it. Aww. I get it. I get it. Like, sometimes people don't understand. Like, you know, when you're in a relationship, you want to see everybody in relationships. You want to see everybody happy. And sometimes you think that, you know, a person's happiness is defined by, you know, whether they're in a relationship or not. I don't like meddling friends like that. And, and I'm not one of those people either. Like, I'm the last person who would want to set one of my friends up with anybody that I know because I'm not going to be there for the collateral damage when they break up or when she cheats on him or whatever. Um, but I really feel like Taylor would have no problem finding anybody that she wants uh, when she's ready, you know, um, or when she's ready to write new music. And, and besides, this is the perfect time for her to be single. She's got the number one album in the world for three weeks in a row. There are a lot of men, there are a lot of men who probably might not be able to deal with her busy schedule, because in order for her to have the number one album for four weeks in a row, she's got to be constantly out of town, like living out of a suitcase, promoting, promoting, promoting. A lot of times, guys don't really understand that. Um, and my last thought on this is, don't take this the wrong way, um, married people or single people. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, other single people. But I wouldn't want to be set up by one of my single friends. Because here's my thought. If he's so great, then why aren't you with him? <laughs> does that make sense? Like, does that make sense? <laughs> um, the only people that I would trust to set me up if I was single is a married person. Because they don't have dibs on the guy that you're trying to set them up with. But I don't know about you, but, you know, like, when I was single, I was selfish. If I knew a guy that was worthy of setting up him up, I would be setting him up with me, <laughs> not you. Okay. So that's uh, Cosmo UK. Now, GQ magazine has Dave Chappelle on the cover. Oh, I know. It's been a long time since we've seen Dave Chappelle or even talked about him. Remember, Dave walked away from his Comedy Central show back in 2005. And he also walked away with like $50 million because the DVD, uh, the DVD D deal is the thing that brought in most of the money from what I read. Well, now he's back in front of us. Yeah. And, and, he's, and he's got a bucket list. And here's what he says about his bucket list. I kind of like this. All right, Dave says, for one year, I want to do this thing where I guest star on as many television shows as I possibly can. <laughs> I love television. I'd be a zombie in The Walking Dead, a corpse on CSI. I'd rather, I'd, I'd be the first black guy to bleep, black guy to bleep Olivia Pope on Scandal. Love it. Now, um, and there was a rumor out there that, you know, when he walked away from us in 2005, that he moved to Africa and became like a weirdo. No, he didn't move to Africa. He moved to this little tiny town in Ohio with a population of 3,500 people, with his wife and his children. And you want to know what? I admire that. Wow. I'm going to tell you why. He's openly admitted that he's allergic to show business. In other words, he got into something that he just found, you know, like, oh, these people, this business, the judgment, and so on and so forth. And he walked away and he moved to this little tiny town. How many people can actually say that they do that after they've reached a certain amount of success? I love people who stand in their own truth. And his own truth is that he's not this big showbiz guy. He lives in a little tiny... I bet you there's one grocery store. 
you know, one gas station, and everyone knows everyone, and that's how he's living, and, and I dig that. And I also appreciate that he does want to come back in front of us, but he doesn't want to do it on a grand scale. He wants to do, like, guest starring roles, like touch Hollywood, then fly back to Ohio, then touch it and fly back. I've never met you, Dave Chappelle, but I like that you stand in your own truth. Yes. Yeah. And that is Wendy's Got You Covered. So, the other day I was sharing with you that Rob Pattinson, the vampire boy, he's got a new girlfriend, and her name is FKA Twigs, as in, um, formerly known as Twigs. And so, um, he is now, or she is now feeling the downside of dating such a huge star. She's getting death threats. And she's being flooded with racist remarks on social media because they're dating. And, like, in my Hot Topics meeting, and we have some nice white people here at the show. <laughs> let, me, let me just say that. You know, here, here, in the audience, you who watch, but most of all, you know, like, my Wendy Stiffers, nice white people, and they were all... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and... Sometimes when you surround yourself by nice people, um, they tend to feel like the people... Everybody was like wait a minute, we're still dealing with racism? And I was like, oh, <laughs> you nice white people. <laughs> every day that the dear Lord sends, every last black person feels it in some way, shape, or form, including yours truly. It just goes down. I mean, it's, it's sad, but after a while, you know how to defend and deflect it. Um, I'm not shocked by this racism quite frankly, um, especially because people hide behind their, their computers and they feel as though they can say just anything. Yeah. Second of all, his Twilight... Is that the movie? It's Twilight? Yeah. These are the Twi Hearts, then? Yes. Okay, the Twi Hearts. Um, hearts? Twi Hearts. <laughs> See, we don't have a Twi Heart in our house. Yeah. You know, like, our kid doesn't... He's not a, a, one of the vampire kids. And I really don't think, for the most... Can we talk race for a moment without everybody scratching? Okay. From what I've observed in society, um, the vampire thing is not really a black thing. It's more like a other people thing. You, do you understand what I'm... Black people in the audience, do you know what I'm saying? Can you... Do you, you know what I'm saying? It's not weird. Please, everybody, please, please, please. It's, it's not weird, but we've always been able to talk honest with race, and I just feel like some of those twihards, they don't quite get it, and they're probably, first of all, small-minded and upset that he's taking a walk on the swirly side. <laughs> well, they will, they will have to get over it. They will have to get over it because that's the way the world is working and we all just have to get along. And FKA says that their relationship is worth putting up with all the drama. I agree with her because guess what? I didn't know who Twigs was before this relationship with Rob Van, uh, Patton. I almost called him Rob Van Patton. But, <laughs> but I think that's Dick's son, right? Yeah. Rob Van Patton, he used to date Farrah Fawcett. Uh -huh. He was the one on Eight is Enough? Yep. Yeah. No, Dick. Dick, Dick Van Patten. The Van Pattens were a dynasty back in the 70s. Oy. Anyway, um, I didn't know who Twigs was, so this relationship is good for her. It's bringing her into the forefront. Did you guys know who Twigs was? Clap if you knew. So then my staff, not one of you? Isn't that interesting? Well, so my producers informed me that she was on Jimmy Fallon the other night. She might not have gotten that Jimmy Fallon slot if she wasn't dating Rob. Now, I understand that she's a big um, R&B artist or some sort of pop star over across the pond, but that's not here. So this definitely benefits that girl by dating him. And it, excuse me, it benefits him too because we're seeing him not with Kristen Stewart anymore. Like, he's kind of moved on with... Not that there was anything wrong with Kristen, but he's moved on with his life. So, um, Twigs, now we know who you are. Put up with it until you can't put up with it anymore. <laughs> We've got more show for you, everybody. Do you watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Because -Nine? I do. The very funny Chelsea Coretti is here. Plus, more Wendy watchers are going to win big money in our Rainmaker Money Boost. But up next, our Hot Talk panel is here to break down the biggest stories of the week, including the Bill Cosby sex scandal. So get a snack and come on back. Juicy Hot Topic! And Elvis Duran 
brings the inside scoop on this year's American Music Awards. I want to hear all the juicy backstage stories. Monday on an all-new Wendy. to discuss this week's hottest topics in the latest edition of Hot Talk. Joining me today are our friends. It's Billboard Magazine's Joe Levy. Yay! It's the host of Just Jenny on Sirius XM, Jenny Hutt. Hello. And the presiding judge from a Laura Lake's paternity court. Give it up for Lauren, Lauren Lake. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren. Okay, let's get started. Um, the Bill Cosby scandal continues. You know, at this point, um, dozens of women have come, over a dozen women have come forward alleging that they've been raped by the legendary comic. Netflix has dropped his special. NBC has dropped an upcoming sitcom. The Cosby Show will not be airing in reruns. It's been pulled off the air. Um, it's, it's bad. So, Lauren, the question to you is, um, have we seen the last of Bill Cosby on TV? I don't think so. I personally, uh, I don't want them to pull the Cosby show. I'm, I grew up on that show. I think the spirit of that show is still something that is positive. It was groundbreaking television in the community. It showed African-American families in ways for me growing up, it, it, it reminded me of my family. I still want to share that programming with my son. Uh, and I, I hope for, for uh, just for our gener future generations that they get to see at least that show. I really love it. Yeah. <laughs> Joe? Well, I, I gotta say, you know, I'm in the music industry. I'm, I'm well familiar with the fact that great entertainment can be made by people who I wouldn't want around my mom or my sister. <laughs> but that said, nobody pretends that R. Kelly's music is uh, an educational vehicle or a model for living your life. And the Cosby Show did appear that way. It was presented that way. And everything he's done has been presented that way, mm -hmm. really. Going back to the Fat Albert cartoons. Mm -hmm. and, and so now, all of that, as we're talking about this, it feels different. So we're not going to see that on TV for a minute, and, and we may not see it again because we may never really know the answer to but what has happened. But it was the only person on the show. There's an ensemble cast of mm -hmm. talented, he brilliant But heavy people. is the heavy. Yeah, it's not I know He's the that. crown of the show. However, I just feel like the spirit of the show is still something positive. Mm, I don't. Yeah. I do. I think that the show is positive, but I think I that you can never watch the show the same way. No. I feel like, um, you know, Dr. Cosby has not spoken out about this. He needs to say something, although I don't know what he's going to say. I don't uh, think that this yeah. is the last of that show being on TV. I do think I it might either. return in about 10 or 15 years. Jenny, yes. you say what? Well, I say he's got to say something. But what's he going to say? Because I was thinking no. about that too. I, what's he going to say? How about, I didn't do it. <laughs> Why has nobody, it seems, come out in his defense? Why haven't there been a slew of women saying, what? Bill? Never. Yeah. Well, look, look, I have worked with him, and I will say, and Raven Simone has said, it was nothing but professional. For me, it was nothing but professional. I will say that. But that doesn't in any way, no that doesn't that. in any way negate others' allegations just because right. you had nothing but a professional experience. That's why probably people are yeah. out saying it is through the moon. And, and, and the fact that there were never any charges filed, we're well, dealing with situations uh, where, honestly, it's very wait, wait, difficult. Laura. Be, look, what do you mean? What, sometimes people who have, and again, we don't know Jenny, anything. But you're a lawyer. You know his whole this. team yes. is telling him but don't say a word. Woman, but yes. Okay. That's but, why he's but, not talking. Let, let me, and that's, I'm not defending. It's not about that. It's about being right. honest about the reason why you know why but he's not talking. sometimes women don't can report. I, can I get you gavel? Sometimes, yeah. sometimes yeah. women. Sometimes women but, don't. They feel like they can't. Women, there are women who feel like they can't speak out when this happens to them. Because we're not talking about the women. The women have got the floor. We're, we're listening to all the women. We are, and but we're hearing their allegations. You ask, he, but why he isn't he talking? But he could have at least said, I, didn't, I have not done this, he, regardless of right. what his lawyers want him to do. Let me hold on, you guys. Uh, this week, the AP released a video from November 6th, as in a couple of weeks ago, interviewing Mr. Cosby at the Smithsonian, where he and his wife were there to donate art. But you can imagine the distraction of this whole sexual allegation. Take a look at this, notice the body language, and just hear everything that he says. Go. 
with the, the persona that people know about Bill Cosby, should they believe anything differently about what? There is no comment about that. Now, can I get something from you? What's that? That none of that will be shown. Yeah, and right. we thought, by the way, because it was AP, that it wouldn't be necessary to go over that question with you. And I think you need to get on the phone with his I will, yeah. person immediately. Okay. Oof, 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 oof. Poor Camille. Oof. Yep. His wife. Oh, Joe, yeah. what do you say? You know, he had a similar, there was a similar moment on National Public Radio where he was asked about the same things yes. and there's mm -hmm. just dead silence mm -hmm. and the interviewer says, He's you shaking. are being silent, you're shaking your head no because he won't say anything. I don't know what he can say. I don't know what he can do in that, in that situation. It's an that's an embarrassing piece of footage. It's embarrassing for him. Yeah. And, and I, like I, Wendy said, for his wife, if you want to get me and alone daughters. and try to take me to the carpet, well. Tell me to step outside, get me alone, ask me what you need to ask me. But right it, then in that moment when you're sitting with your wife... In all fairness, that, that was an, a reporter from the AP. That was his job. He would have probably lost his job if he didn't ask but the, the question. What my point is, is again, as you say, why not say something? Mm -hmm. When you're sitting there with your wife in that moment, she thinks she's well, there to the talk about Arthur. Right, and right, she didn't Wendy. say... She, she, said, she said nothing. She should have said, no, my husband didn't. would never... This Again, something. Probably something. She, she said nothing. Nobody said anything. And this story is just, um, you know, pe some people equate this with maybe a scandal like Woody Allen or something like that. But I don't because Woody Allen was not the, is not the face of right. his projects. He's the guy in the back. He's not, you know, um, um, entertaining us with a solid American family and Rudy and all the kids running America's around the house. Dad. He doesn't have little Bill and the Cosby show and Fat Albert and stuff. It's a, a, America's well, dad. Different. Different. He's a weirdo. And, well. <laughs> and, 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 and he went on trial. And he did go on trial. There was a trial. I mean, the, 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 the charges resurfaced uh, and, and there is an ongoing question as to what did or didn't happen, but he went on trial. Well, it seems as though this is not going to go away anytime soon. So, um, you know, we'll keep you posted. In the meantime, there is a new series called Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. <laughs> and it's going to be on cable, and it's causing a lot of controversy because the ads are being banned already, although I pass three of them on my way to <laughs> work too. every morning, um, in, in New York and Los Angeles and whatnot. Take a look at the ad and tell me what you think about uh, this picture. Okay? <laughs> that's, I, I, now see, I love it. I love it. Joe, what do you think of that ad? I, I think the ad is good. There are shows on Bravo I'd like to see banned, but I don't want to see I, that ad banned. No. I, she had her middle finger I, up. I, I think you see past oh. this the other day, and I had a chuckle. Like, it's it really gave game. me a belly laugh, because at first glance, you go, does she have her middle finger up? And you go, oh, it's her ring right. finger. Right. And I said, fantastic. And, and, and look, go F yourself, but the F is for fine. Yes. Go, well, go yes. find yourself. Here's I the thing think that, that I genius. think. They're going to ban this in the subways. There are far worse things that real yeah. people are doing on the subway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that. I know. <laughs> it seems like a good show worth watching, and it's I already like got it. us talking. It's going to be a series. So thank you all for being here. Thank, thank you. you. And happy weekend. For more information about my fabulous panelists, go to wendyshow.com. Up next, funny girl Chelsea Peretti is here. on the hit show Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and she keeps us laughing in her new stand-up special. It's called Chelsea Peretti, one of the greats. Take a look. <laughs> Motorcycles are very silly to me. Like, I feel like, why not just unzip your pants and pull your out, and then just walk around town just banging pots and pans, just like... <laughs> I love you so much. I'm such a fan. I lived here for so many years and listened to you every day. Two to six. You're a hero. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chelsea. I appreciate it.
appreciate it. Um, I love this laser cut leather Thank number you. that you have on. Thank you. And if you keep your feet exactly where they oh, are, okay, I yes. love your shoes. Can I touch them? The texture. Please do. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're like brush suede. You can't see through the shoe cam, but they're like Wait, nappy. Wait, hold on. How do you I get what? it so you can yeah. see the heel is cool too? And the heel is cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It didn't look cute up here, but at least, so you know. No, it all works and it matches your beautiful blue eyes. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on all your success. The Golden Globes of the thank show, you. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Likewise. Do, thank you. Do each of you get a Golden Globe? We get nothing. <laughs> I mean, you don't have, like, a statue? No, no. They were asking me backstage. No, we didn't get, um, I got a framed photograph. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, so, is you this You know your... how Hollywood is. No, I don't. I'm from Jersey. <laughs> Look, um, is this your first major role, Chelsea Peretti? Because I don't recall seeing you doing anything else. Yeah, I didn't. I, this is my first network, you know, big shot that I've gotten. So I'm really grateful. And yeah. this is so surreal. Like, I still can't believe this is my life. Oh, Chelsea. <laughs> so listen, and now you started out doing stand-up? I did. I started doing stand-up, started here in New York. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, then I moved to L.A. to write for Sarah Silverman and then... Went from now, there. See, I don't know her, but in my head, she's a good girl. Oh, I thought you were going to say friend in your head, but... No, then... no, because I don't know her like that. No, because yes. she's part of the cool clique. Yes. You know, we probably couldn't be friends because she's, she's cool. You're cool. And, but I like her. Yeah. She's a good person. She really is. And I think you are, too. I think you're cool, too. Thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Come on. You're the coolest. So, I heard that you now have an alias, like, for cars and hotels and stuff. <laughs> now, if you say it, then you can't use it anymore. You have to find a new one. But what's your That's alias? That's fine. I, you know, I created an alias that was very stupid because it was another famous person. I chose Anita Baker. <laughs> <laughs> big fan, big fan. But, yeah, I chose Anita Baker, and I didn't really think it out that that would just create a lot of problems. <laughs> Like, so there would be someone, like, a car service to take me to some event, and, like, they, they would be looking for Anita Baker, like, so excited. Like, her a biggest fan. A middle-aged black lady. Yes. They see a young white girl. And they see me, they're like, oh. Like, <laughs> what is this? Like, this one guy was hiding his sign, trying to be demure, and he was, like, a huge Anita Baker fan. He had her playing in the car. <laughs> like, he wanted to show her how much he loved her. I was like, oh. And he wow. told me, like, I'm sorry. I, I have to tell you, like, I was waiting for the song the legend. Anita Baker. <laughs> and he's like, my wife and I are huge fans. I don't get excited about any celebrities but Anita Baker. Well, did, I was like, did you tell him that you're only on one of the biggest sitcoms on TV ever? Yeah. No. No. Um, so now, Andy Sandberg and you were childhood friends. Yes. Now, did you maintain that friendship all along? And or, Well, you... I need to say, like, we weren't fully childhood friends. I had a huge crush on him, and I used is, to... Is that you guys in the station wagon? That's us. That was our sixth grade graduation, Wendy. And as you can see, he has a very festive sweatshirt on <laughs> with a leather detail. Uh-huh. Um, we've always loved leather, both of us. Yes. So, um, but yeah, I had a huge crush. I'd call his house, hang up all the time on his, <laughs> on his mom in the days of landlines. Yes. You know, so. Well, well now, you, now you have love in, in real life. You do have a I boyfriend. Do. Yes, I do. And um, I recognized him when I saw the picture. I was like, oh my gosh, her boyfriend's Jordan Peele. Yes. From Key and Peele on yes. Comedy Central. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so you're down with the brown, <laughs> down with the swirl. <laughs> How long have you guys been dating? Uh, about a year and a half, yeah. We live together, we have a dog. It feels like a done deal, but I don't want to say that and then it backfires, yeah. you know? Now, did you buy the dog or rescue it together or it was um, your dog first? We did, yeah. Together? Yeah. He was out of town, but I was sending him photos and videos and then we made the call. I don't want you to break up, but it, now if you break up, now who gets to keep the dog? I know you've thought I do, about it. I do, I have to. Are you sure he's not going to fight you? It's... You know, Nick Cannon is fighting Mariah Carey for dog custody. Really? Yes. You, you know he's on our show this season. Nick is he? Cannon, so I've gotten to meet him and I'm like, I can't ask him anything that I want to. <laughs> I want to be like, so... Uh... What, what, what would you want to ask? Just about Mariah, like, you know, what she's like on a date. What does she eat for breakfast? You know? Champagne. Like... Champagne. <laughs> According to what we read. Oh, so she's like all of us. <laughs> now, now, you're also on the set with our friend Terry Crews. Yes. So here's my thing about Terry. Terry. <laughs> 
Terry knows how to move his pecs, and Terry is a nice looking guy, <laughs> and you know, when you hug him, all you feel are muscles and stuff. Yes. But when I saw Terry for Sexiest on the People magazine, and the look that he's giving us. And out of 206. Like, he's a good looking guy, but he's trying to give us stone faced Terry as opposed to the goofy, funny guy that we know. I like that he's giving a little more shoulder than that shirt would have accommodated. <laughs> he's saying, ladies, this little millimeter's for you. He's so fun. He's fun on the set. I know he is. He's fun, but Terry also has a dark side, which I love. You know, I'm drawn to darkness. And he'll tell these. <laughs> Obviously. dark side of him. Tell me about this. He'll just talk about growing up in Flint, you know, and like, you know, he has a book out. I've been reading it. Yeah. You know, he's had some hard times, Terry. Yeah. So he'll tell you something really tragic and then it's like action and you're like <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to be funny through the tears. Well, look, I heard you, that you have a little, we saw your Instagram. You have a, just a little <laughs> thing for Beyonce. Who doesn't? And um, you superimposed your face <laughs> on a lot of Beyonce <laughs> pictures. <laughs> and um, I want you to know that we made a special gift for you. It's right oh here goodness. to your right. <laughs> now look, all right, now look at the other side of it though. Michael oh. Lee's gonna turn it around. <laughs> I love it. Chelsea, it was so lovely oh to God. meet you. What Don't be a stranger. I will. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Chelsea Peretti, everybody. Don't forget to check out her stand-up comedy special. It's called Chelsea Peretti, One of the Greats. It's on Netflix now. Still ahead, Wendy Watch is gonna have a chance to jump in our rain making money booth, but up next, it's time for Ask Wendy. Yeah. All new, she brings us joy. Joy Behar and I talk turkey. Look at us, it's like the last supper with Barbara as Jesus. Yeah. And put a twist on tradition. Update your Thanksgiving with Clinton Kelly. We're telling traditions to stuff it. <laughs> Tuesday on an all-new Wendy. This November, it's November here at Wendy. We're making it rain all month long. And you at home can cash in. Cha-ching! Log on to my Facebook page and sign up for your chance to win. Watch us here every weekday. And if we announce your name, you could win cold hard cash. Get in on the November rain today. Wendy, everyone have a seat, except for you. How are you doing? How you doing, Wendy? <laughs> How can I help? So I've been dating this guy for three months, uh -huh. and he wants us to exchange Christmas gifts. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He asked me what I want, and I don't know what to tell him because I want an expensive handbag, but I don't think that's appropriate. So what should I tell him, Wendy? It's totally not appropriate. You have to buy that handbag on your own or wait for dating him for another nine months. Nine months? That's right. Yes, yes. <laughs> But I, I, I'll tell you what you can ask. You yes, know, please. A lot of the girls these days, and I ha happen to be a fan of bag charms. Mm -hmm. Those are those cute tchotchkes that you hang outside of your bag. Yes. Like, for instance, if you want a Louis Vuitton bag, you buy that bag on your own. Right. But have him give you a bag charm. A bag charm can be as much as three and four. Uh, I mean, you know, they're not cheap. But at okay. least you're not asking him for a $2,500 or $2,800 handbag. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All Very right, well. Thank you. Christine, how you doing? Hi, Christine. The Christmas season is upon us, and I always host Christmas, but this year, I really don't want to do it. Every year, I do the cooking and the cleaning. My family shows up two, three hours late, okay. but I don't want to break the tradition. Okay. What should I do? I think you should do it one more year. One more year. You, know, you know why? Because, like I was saying at the top of the show, it's now the holiday season, and people are yeah. planning, and it's a little late for you to back out. Have it this year. Mm -hmm. and then announce to everybody that you're not having it next year right, and remind them idea. that you're not having it again in April just so that, you know, <laughs> so, so they, that they're prepared. Just so they get it. Right, but yeah, have it, just, just grin and bear it. All right. All right, good luck, right. Christine, Thanks. and happy holiday. <laughs> Up next, everybody, an audience member is going to go into our Rainmaker Money booth. Don't go away. Watch The Wendy Show whenever you want on my YouTube channel. Hot topics, celebrity interviews, and of course my legendary after show. It's all on YouTube. Subscribe today.
alternative too, I get it. Look, we're continuing to make it rain big money here on Wendy. And now it's time for one lucky audience member to step into our November Rainmaker. Say hello to our player, and your name is? Diane. How you doing, Wendy? How you doing? Yay! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and where are you from? Philadelphia. Yeah. Woo! And what do you do for a living? Oh my God, Wendy, I've been working for 26 years for Amtrak. I'm a train operator. Perfect. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Diane, put on your safety goggles. We don't want wig. you to get. Yeah, we. Is that a wig? Is yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Is it is it secure? It's very. Okay, because it's gonna get windy in there. Put, put on your goggles, and John is gonna open the door for you. John, open the door for lovely Diane, the train conductor. No, no, operator. What's the difference? Big difference. That's okay, how I gotta get my money. Just get in. <laughs> Diane, Diane, keep your hands above your waist. So grab up here, not down here. Got okay? it. 30 seconds on the Come clock. On, Diane is also playing for Jacqueline West, who's our viewer at home. How are you doing, Jacqueline? And go! 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 Diane, Diane, up on the ceiling. Up, up. Yes, yes. Up, Diane. Yes, yes, Diane. Up. Diane, look. All over there. You know what? Now, Diane, don't touch anything on the ground. Secure this money. Come on around here. I think this is the most stuff that we've seen the money apron. Yeah! During the commercial, we're going to count the money and find out how much Diane grabbed for herself and Jacqueline. Don't go away. Woo! came out of our November Rainmaker. Diane, you've grabbed the most money of anybody all week. Yeah! Yes, Diane, Diane, $1,750. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations to our um, at-home watcher, uh, Jacqueline, in Washington State, because we're gonna send you your check for the same amount. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's been a day. Listen, on Monday, we've got a full hour of juicy hot topics, and plus the American Music Awards are Sunday night, and my friend from the radio, Elvis Duran, is coming here with all the highlights. And we've got a new edition of Trendy at Wendy, where you can get discounts on the season's hottest gifts at unbelievable discounts. I love you for watching. Have a wonderful weekend.